Everyone knows in Survivor, you can never be too comfortable. Everything's always changing. So everyone, drop your buffs. You are now switching tribes. There will now be three tribes instead of two tribes. And the name of the third tribe is Arzanetti. Your new tribes are as follows. new tribes, the castaways participated in a series of icebreakers with their new tribe mates. But as everyone knows, everything in Survivor happens for a reason. Their answers would be used in their next immunity challenge. The way this challenge is going to work is we're going to split you all into individual breaker rooms with one of us each, and we're going to ask you each two questions, and then collectively, whichever tribe gets the most amount of questions right will win immunity. If you get it right, you'll get a point. If you don't, you won't. Only one tribe is going to travel council. Last Zoom at the tribe swap, uh, we had you do a bunch of icebreakers. So we recorded all the answers to your icebreakers. And now you oh, can to recall your tribe mates' answers to some of the questions. Uh, you have 15 seconds from the moment we tell you the question, and you have to answer both individually. If Jake Lapidus and Aaron Goldberg could be animals, what type of animals would they be? You have 15 seconds. Um, I remember most of us saying that we didn't know, so I'm gonna assume that that's what that is. Your question is, what are Noah Ziskin and Noah Goldschmied's favorite utensils? Go. Spork for Ziskin, fork for Goldschmied. So they posted a clue and the clue had four numbers on it. Like, I was trying to think, like, what room in the school could possibly have four numbers? Everybody else told me that they had given up on trying to look for it with these numbers that was a clue on the Ed's B. There just isn't a room. They thought it was maybe A107. I was looking at the lockers and I noticed the lockers had four numbers on them. We find the locker, but there's nothing on it. We can't open it because it, they're all like boarded up. He reaches up, he gets a paper and then he brings it down and I'm like, oh my God. This is the idol. She just found it over a locker, but somebody else had to get it for her because she was too short to find it, which I find kind of hilarious. So that was pretty exciting. <laughs> so the first tribe swap happened. And I'm really excited because I finally get to be on the same tribe as Maddie. I'm a little nervous about this tribe because on my last one, at least I had Jenna. But now I'm with people who are friends. I haven't really made my way into those cliques. I hope I can find a way to do that and get through it. Maddie's my ride or die, and even we even before this game started, we were like, "I'm gonna have your back, and you're gonna have mine." I worked with Schrider in the first tribe, so me, my, me and Maya were already friends prior to the game. So me, Maya, and Schrider made a group chat, and we were talking about what we were gonna do. We wanted Cohen out. I knew something may have been up with Dylan because he sent me screenshots. Dylan Cohen fake texts and fake texts to me and Yell. It was very early in the game, so at first I was like, maybe he is being honest. Faking Giddens as Maddie saying that she wants me and Yell out. Why? Why would someone go to like that extent to like make me trust them like it was really the beginning i've seen earlier on in the game that you know cohen has been cohen has been a threat Co cohen won the slide puzzle pretty much a competition that <laughs> required some sort of skill to be good at so i realized that i told M maddie and maya because i trust them because i've been with maddie the whole game but then i was like man something's fishy and then when i was talking to jake trider about it he said he got the exact same screenshots this tribal i wanted to make sure that i had everyone on my side and everyone continuing to trust me. So that made me feel better. Another reason why I really trust him. You know, Maddie tells me that Cohen is, you know, sending fake texts to people and pretending that, you know, that, that she wants to get everybody else up, but that's, that's not true. 
I know that everybody else knows that and these this these fake texts are like oh my god. Maya said that she worked with Yael in the past so we assumed that she was going to be working with us but after a while we got a little bit sus of her so Schrader asked her if he and her should vote for me instead and she was like yeah I think we should. I don't know who to believe I don't know who to vote for. Me and Jacob Schrader seem to be in between like the whole Maddie, Maya and then like Dylan and I can't choose which of them to send home but I guess I'll just go with whoever Jacob's going for. Hey, uh, Schrider, what were your reactions as soon as you heard about the tribes ball? Uh, I was alright with it. I like my old tribe, but um, change is good because you get to know new people, and I met four new people on this tribe, and I think we're a good tribe, and I was happy. The tribe split was two from one tribe and four from the other, so has that affected the dynamic of the current tribe? I think it has, but at the end of the day, it's more, I don't think people really care about like old tribes. I think it's more about who you trust moving forward and who you want to keep. Maya, so like like there was a 4-2 split with the old tribes. There's like a there's a 3-3 split with girls and guys. Is there anything going on with that or is it just the same as Strider? Same with Strider. It's just kind of new people, see what happens. It's all different. So, we'll see what ends up happening. Maddie, was there any fear of the fact that sort of bouncing going more on this um, tribe split? You and Jacob are the only ones from your previous tribe. Was that scary going into it or do you think you found trusted alliances? I feel like um, it, was, it, was a, it was a tad scary because we were the only ones from the other tribe, so obviously we were at a little bit of a disadvantage, but I think, I think it's pretty good now. I think I'm all right. So Jake, uh, being, being the only uh, grade 11, everyone else in grade 12, has it been difficult for you to make new relationships on your tribe? Um, I don't think it's been difficult for me to make new relationships, but it was definitely uh, interesting coming into the game, especially like on this tribe, because at least on the last tribe, I knew a few grade 11s, but on this tribe, I'm not really familiar with that many people, but I feel confident in the uh, friendships and relationships I've made so far. Let's go to the challenge. So you get on the challenge and obviously you guys lost. You only got two out of 12, right? So what went, yeah, what went wrong with the challenge? What do you think you guys could have done better? A few people knew that, like called it, that it would be important, but some of us wrote down the questions, but not the actual answers. So next time we'll be more detailed. So yeah, would you say that there's anyone who deserves blame for this challenge or was it a collective group failure? I don't think so. I think it was just like the group together. It seems like you guys only got two, other tribe got three. That was like pretty close. But then the other tribe got nine. Like, was there any like information rallied over to the other tribe or was it just, do you think they were more prepared than you guys? Maddie, what do you think? I heard that they communicated to say the least. That's all. Communicated with who? Well, each other, who else? But you guys could have communicated. You just didn't have the time. I heard the other tribe like was more prepared. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, they, they, well, they're also like judging that, that tribe that got nine, they're all outside of this game. They're all really good friends. So odds are they probably knew some of the answers like to begin with. Okay. And, like, they're probably more comfortable with each other. So do you think not having these like pre-existing uh, alliances has affected your game? Because who knows, maybe uh, Schrider and Giddens, best buds outside the game. So I don't know, that could be something going on. <laughs> Schrider, you, uh, you want to speak to that? I have nothing to say. Kittens, you got anything to say about that? Same as Strider. Okay, um, yeah, has there been any talks about hidden immunity items? Yeah, I mean, everyone's curious if anyone has one, but we won't know. Do you think anyone has one? Honestly, I have no clue. Strider, you're, you're a pretty crafty kid, you know, constructing uh, all these fantasy team rosters. Uh, how's your fantasy team experience if you craft uh, <laughs> ways to find the immunity idol? Uh, my fantasy managing skills not help me with the immunity idol. Strider, do you think there is a leader on this tribe? I don't I, I don't know who the leader is. I think we're just six people who are just trying to find the best way to move forward with the best five. Like Giddens, do you think there's anyone in this tribe that's expendable? And can you could just vote them off and nothing would change? Um, I wouldn't say that because I think it's way too early to tell because especially with the last challenge, it wasn't mostly like like wasn't like a puzzle or like anything like that. So like it's hard to blame one person for anything since we all fail together. And I don't think we know each other well enough yet to say that one person's more like needed than the other. But yeah, you still have to pick someone at the end of the day to vote off. So how do you kind of make that decision when there's you have nothing to go on, it's relatively new, how do you choose? 
Uh, it's been difficult, especially without the relationships that I had in my other tribe, but I've been, you know, I've had some talks with a few people and I feel confident in what we're doing. Okay, and with that, it is time to vote. Okay, if anyone has a hidden email and you want to play it, now will be the time to do Skip. I've got it. I've got a, a little idol I'd like to play. Okay. Can you just show it to the screen? Okay, this is a hidden new idol. Any votes cast for Maddie will not count. First vote, Maddie does not count. Second vote, Maddie does not count. Third vote, Maddie does not count. Fourth vote, Maddie does not count. Fifth vote, Dylan Cohen. That's one vote, Dylan. Last vote. Jake Giddens, we are tied. That's one vote, Jake. <laughs> one vote, Giddens. We are tied, Jake and Giddens. Uh, Jake and Dylan Cohen. So basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna send a new form to the chat and you can only vote for Jake or Cohen and we'll go from there. You guys can talk if you want. Like you can talk out loud so we have it on the thing also. I, I mean, I, think the, I think the answer is pretty obvious here. Someone who has been faking texts with me for some odd reason. I'm not sure why. Also, um, Dylan, I just wanted to say, like- Dylan can't <laughs> talk back though. He can't like read. Oh no, it's fine. <laughs> oh, okay, I fine. just wanted to say, um, when I text someone, I never start with hey. So like, please te like text me at least once before trying to imitate me if you can do it correctly. Just, just a thought. All right, I'll tally the votes. First vote, Dylan Cohen. One vote, Cohen. Next vote, Dylan Cohen. That's two votes, Cohen, no votes, Giddens. Sixth person voted out, chat survivor, Dylan Cohen. Cohen, I know you can't talk right now, but you can hear me, so uh, the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. Crazy tribal council. Lines were clearly drawn here, I would say. It's a very nice play by Maddie. Okay. With that, until next challenge. <laughs> After they met their new tribes, the castaways participated in a series of icebreakers with their new tribe mates. But as everyone knows, everything in Survivor happens for a reason. Their answers would be used in their next immunity challenge.